Hello. In this video, I would like to introduce the Vivo V29 Pro Review. I trust that this video is very useful for all of you. When you have already watched the video, you know about Vivo V29 Pro clearly and it helps you in making a decision to choose a better smartphone for your work and lifestyles. I am introducing to you the detailed Vivo V29 Pro review that is important especially verdict, pros, and cons at the end of the video. Please kindly enjoy watching the video as following. Vivo has yet another premium midranger in its ranks, one produced in India and with a design inspired by India, the Vivo V29 Pro. Like previous V-series models, the V29 Pro heavily focuses on photography. The V29 Pro doubles down on the previous model's Aura Light concept with a dedicated color-changing illuminator on the back, introduces a dedicated portrait telephoto camera and brings an extra high-res display into the mix. The new Aura Light implementation includes a separate dedicated set of LEDs, 15.6mm in diameter, that can automatically adjust their temperature depending on ambient light, and you can also tweak it manually if you so choose. These are supposed to be 36% brighter than the previous generation. The 2MP dedicated macro cam from the V27 Pro might be gone, but a 12MP, 2x zoom portrait camera is in its place. No other V-series phone has even had one, so this is a big change. The Sony IMX663 sensor has all-pixel dual-core autofocus, which helps it in the dark. Next on the list of major upgrades is the display, which remains unchanged in size at 6.78 inches in diagonal. It is, however, an unusually high-res panel. The 1260x2800px resolution makes for a 453 ppi density, so you can count on some extra sharpness. Vivo was dead set on maintaining a slim waistline for the V29 Pro, with a nicely thin 7.5mm thickness. That's meant keeping the battery capacity at 4600mAh, though if the V27 Pro is any indication, that should be plenty. Charging is now rated at 80W instead of the V27 Pro 66W spec, but those power ratings don't mean that much, so we'll see how the charging speed stacks up. Design One of the signature design aspects of the Vivo V series has traditionally been the UV reactive paint job. Well, for better or worse, that is gone with the V29 generation. Color options are a lot simpler and straightforward this time around. The V29 Pro is available in Himalayan blue, which is the color of our review unit. The Himalayas apparently inspire the wavy pattern on its back. The finish is glossy, attracting and retaining plenty of fingerprints and grease. Thankfully, it is not particularly slippery and grips fairly well to the skin. The V29 Pro can also be had in space black, which looks pretty plain in comparison. But we can't fault anyone for wanting a more traditional-looking device that blends into its environment. We did find info online about an elusive third pink color option, but we can't find it in any picture, so it might not actually exist. The V29 Pro doesn't have too much in the way of distinctive characteristics, but we do like the overall look of the camera island. It covers a large surface area, and that large aura light ring flash that takes about as much space as a camera module is definitely not something you see every day. Some things haven't changed, though. The super slim profile was one of the design team's priorities, and they've kept it for the V29 Pro. The curves on both the display and the back panel that meet in a thin frame on the sides enhance the perception of compactness and contribute to an overall premium feeling. The middle frame itself is also glossy with a metal-like silver finish. We find it perfectly appealing. That's further reinforced when you fire up the display on the V29 Pro and look at the slim bezels. It's one of the more premium-looking handsets you can get in the midrange. 
The punch hole for the selfie camera is also quite reasonably sized, especially considering that it houses a large 50MP camera with autofocus. This, too, contributes to the overall premium look of the midranger. Materials and construction. First things first, we need to address the ingress protection situation. For the first time ever on a V-series device, the regular V29 gets an IP68 rating. For whatever reason, that is not the case with the V29 Pro. It does not have an official ingress protection rating. The V29 Pro employs a standard glass sandwich design. Both the front and back are covered with some sort of glass, though Vivo does not specify exactly what kind, which is not exactly confidence-inspiring. The middle frame appears to be made of plastic. On the plus side, there doesn't seem to be any flex or give in the overall construction. The back side has a slight hollowness but nothing to lose sleep over. Controls The V29 Pro has a pretty standard control scheme. The volume rocker and power button are both on the right-hand side. Both are fairly thin, which is necessitated by the middle frame's width. Even so, the buttons still offer nice tactile feedback and are what we would call nice and clicky. There is nothing on the left side of the frame. And the top houses just a secondary noise-canceling mic Vivo continues to include a plastic insert in the top frame. That's presumably done for better wireless reception, though with a plastic frame and glass front and back, we don't really see the need for extra plastic. The bottom of the V29 Pro is pretty busy. Just like its predecessor, it lacks a storage card slot. Instead, you get two nano SIM card slots on a single tray. The tray does have a pretty beefy rubber gasket, which suggests that the phone could perhaps still withstand some encounter with water despite the lack of an official ingress rating. Speaking of omissions on the V29 Pro, it lacks a stereo speaker setup. Unlike many competitors, its earpiece does not double as a speaker, which seems like a missed opportunity. The only speaker you get is the singular bottom firing one. The V29 Pro uses an optical underdisplay fingerprint reader. It is perfectly snappy and reliable. We have no complaints. One interesting thing to note is that the light and proximity sensors on the V29 Pro are also under the display and located somewhere around the selfie camera. Connectivity The V29 Pro is a dual-SIM 5G device with SA-NSA sub.6 connectivity on both SIM slots. It also has dual-band Wi-Fi 6, AC, and Bluetooth 5.3 with LE support. For positioning, there is GPS, L1, GLONASS, G1, BDS, B1i, Galileo, E1, QZSS, L1, and NAVIC. We already noted the lack of expandable storage. The V29 Pro also lacks NFC and a 3.5mm audio jack. The Type-C port on the V29 Pro is backed up by a basic USB 2.0 connection, which means a theoretical maximum transfer rate of 480 megabits per second. It has USB host slash OTG support but nothing fancy beyond that, like video output. In case you were wondering, the phone has no notification LED. In terms of sensors, the V29 Pro has an ISM 6DSO accelerometer and gyroscope combo, a SensorTech STK33737 light and hardware proximity combo and a Memzik MMC5603 magnetometer and compass combo. There is no barometer on board. Unusually high-res 6.78-inch OLED display. One of the V29 Pro's peculiar upgrades is its new display. While it is the same diagonal as on the V27 Pro, as well as the V29 and V27 at 6.78 inches, the panel has higher than most resolution of 1260 by 2800 px resulting in a 453 ppi pixel density, making it sharper than the bulk of panels out there, 
just short of 1440p high-end models. Naturally, the panel supports a 120Hz refresh rate. Vivo also advertises up to 2160Hz pulse width modulation for dimming, so even though sensitive to flickering should be perfectly okay. In terms of brightness, we measured 532 nits on the slider. When exposed to bright conditions, the phone went up to a max of 1029 nits. That's a pretty great result, and the V29 Pro never finds itself strapped for brightness. The V29 Pro also gets pretty dim, with an output of just 2.2 nits at its minimum brightness setting. Battery Life the Vivo V29 Pro has a 4,600 mAh battery, just like its predecessor, and the V27 Pro is rocking the same 4 nm MediaTek Dimensity 8200 chipset. This entails pretty similar battery life across the two, which is kind of the case, but not entirely. The V29 Pro managed a solid 113 hours of endurance in our testing and pretty much matched the standby and call times of the V27 Pro, as expected. However, on the whole, the V29 Pro scored a bit lower in endurance than the V27 Pro due to its relatively lower on-screen endurance numbers. We double-checked the numbers and can only conclude that the new higher resolution, 1260 by 2800 pixel, display consumes more power. Charging test. One of the upgrades to the V29 Pro coming from the V27 Pro is a new 80W Vivo flash charge charging standard. That's compared to the V27 generation and its 66W flash charge technology. The latter has already proven itself to be pretty fast and competitive in the mid-range. Since the battery capacity is the same at 4,600 mAh, the real question is, did Vivo improve charging speeds this year? The simple answer here, a resounding no. The V29 Pro basically charges at the exact same rate as the V27 Pro. The charging curve is slightly different. But not by a lot. The V29 Pro managed to get from empty to 39% in 15 minutes, then 69% in 30 minutes, with a charge to 100% taking exactly 50 minutes. A full charge of the battery took an additional 4 minutes, so if you want to max out the battery charge, it should take you around 54 minutes. Loudspeaker Test we complained a bit about the V27 Pro and V27 not having stereo speakers, and will be forced to extend those complaints to the V29 Pro as well. It has almost become a given in this price range, and it seems only Vivo is still sticking to a single speaker configuration, and we're not okay with that. In our testing, the V29 Pro placed in the same average category as the V27 Pro in terms of loudness, again lagging behind the competition. Interestingly enough, the V29 Pro ended up quieter than the regular V29. Output quality is good enough, though nothing to phone home about. The V29 Pro has a bit better low-end frequency response than the other V29 and V27 models. FunTouch 13 on top of Android 13 Just like the V27 family before them, the V29 Pro and V29 run FunTouch 13 on top of Android 13. Vivo did discuss its update and support policy regarding the V29. We can only assume that said information applies to the V29 Pro as well, which means that owners can expect two major Android updates and three years of security fixes. It's not the most generous update policy ever, but it's not too bad. FunTouch 13 remains an experience relatively detached from stock Android, but not necessarily in a bad way. For one reason or another, Vivo decided not to change the chipset going from the V27 Pro to the V29 Pro. It still runs on the MediaTek Dimensity 8200, a premium mid-range chip aimed to bring flagship-grade performance on non-flagship smartphones. The Dimensity 8200 is an overclocked version of the Dimensity 8000 chip, 
but it is built on the 4 nanometers process technology and comes with HyperEngine 6.0, which supports Vulkan, though not the full-featured API, for ray tracing and gaming, FPS improvement and smart resource optimization. HyperEngine is a set of features dedicated to improving smartphone gaming performance in the flagship killer territory. The Dimensity 8200 also comes with improved camera support over the Dimensity 8000 thanks to the Imagic 785 ISP. The Dimensity 8200 has an octa-core CPU configuration consisting of one big Cortex A78 core, clocked at up to 3.1 GHz, three more Cortex A78 ones, working at up to 3.0 GHz and four Cortex A55 cores, capped at 2.0 GHz. On the GPU side of things, we have the Mali G610MC6. All of this is paired with LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 3.1 storage in the V29 Pro. Our review unit has 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. However, a lesser version with 8GB of physical RAM and the same amount of storage also exists. Let's kick things off with some CPU tests and Geekbench. Here, the Dimensity 8200 is clearly showing its mid-range prowess. It ends up being basically unmatched in the multi-core test and only slightly bested by the likes of the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. An upgraded triple camera setup. The Vivo V29 Pro has a 50MP, OIS-enabled main camera, just like the regular V29 and the V27 Pro. In fact, it is the exact same camera with the IMX766 sensor. An 8MP ultra-wide camera accompanies it. Unlike the aforementioned siblings, the V29 Pro drops the 2MP dedicated macro snapper in favor of a brand new 12MP, 2x portrait telephoto snapper. As already mentioned, the main camera on the V29 Pro is very familiar. It is based on the Sony IMX766 sensor, a January 1st 56-inch sensor with 1.0M individual pixels. It sits behind an f/1.9 lens with OIS. There's nothing particularly fancy about the autofocus system, just PDAF. The ultra-wide camera reports using the Omnivision OV08D10 sensor, which is pretty small in size, 1-4.0 inch, 1.12m and is paired with f-2.2 aperture. Sadly, there is no autofocus on the ultra-wide, so it can't double as a macro shooter and tame over for the missing macro. Last but not least, on the back, there is the new 12MP portrait telephoto. The V29 Pro is actually the first V-series phone to have a dedicated telephoto. It is based on the Sony IMX663 sensor, which has a January 2 93-inch size and 1.22M individual pixels. It has a 2x zoom lens that can focus on subjects at 0.5M to 2M away, 1.6 to 6.5 feet. Also, all-pixel dual-core, autofocus, which helps it in the dark. One of the signature features of the V29 Pro is the circular LED flash on the back. It is called a Smart Aura Light and measures a hefty 15.6mm in diameter on the V29 Pro. It is now 36% brighter than the previous generation. This flash adjusts its color temperature according to ambient light. Or you could tweak the settings manually yourself. Typical for the V-Series, an impressive selfie camera is on board, a 50MP module with a fairly wide 92-degree lens with autofocus. And not just autofocus, but IAF that ensures your face is always in focus. It is based on the Samsung S5 KJN1 Tetracell sensor, commonly known as the Isocell JN1. It is a January 2 76-inch sensor with 0.64M individual pixels. The camera app is quite familiar, similar to the one seen on the V and X series. There's a straightforward zoom selector with 0.6x, 1x, and 2x steps. 
The main modes are arranged in a carousel formation, and you can switch between them by swiping or tapping on one of the visible modes. The more tab lists the rest of the modes, and from there, you can also customize the modes you have available in the viewfinder. The Pro mode allows you to adjust the focus distance, white balance, shutter speed, ISO, and exposure. You can use Pro mode on the primary and ultra-wide cameras. There's an I button where you can get helpful information explaining all of the options in case you are just getting into photography. Shooting in RAW is also an option. The competition. The Vivo V29 Pro has an MSRP of 39,999 Indian rupees, $480, for the base 8GB per 256GB version and $515 for the 12GB per 256GB one. That puts the phone in a rather weird spot. Its pricing is not quite in the premium category, but it is still a bit expensive for a mid-ranger. Most of its direct competitors tend to be a bit cheaper, which is not a great or competitive position to be in. Let's kick things off with Samsung and the popular Galaxy A54, which fits the same budget. A 128GB per 8GB model will run you just around €350, Euros, while a 256GB per 8GB variant costs about €399, Euros, making it notably cheaper than the Vivo V29 Pro. The Samsung phone has expandable storage and offers IP67 ingress protection and Gorilla Glass 5 protection for its display. The Galaxy A54 also has a 120Hz AMOLED panel with HDR10 Plus support. Battery life is a bit better on the Galaxy, although the Samsung mid-ranger is limited to 25W charging. The Galaxy A54 also has a potent 50MP OIS-enabled main and 12MP ultrawide cameras but lacks a telephoto shooter, unlike the V29 Pro. Another Samsung phone worth mentioning is the much cheaper Galaxy A34, which brings a similar overall experience on a much tighter budget. Unsurprisingly, there are a couple of viable options over in Camp Xiaomi. For less than the V29 Pro, you can get a Poco F5 slash Redmi Note 12 Turbo with Gorilla Glass 5, stereo speakers, a large 5000 mAh battery with 67W charging, a 12-bit 120Hz HDR capable AMOLED display, a potent Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 chipset and a pretty versatile camera setup with a 64MP OIS-enabled main shooter. Alternatively, you could lower the budget quite significantly and go for something like the ever-popular Redmi Note 12 Pro. Despite its lower price, it still offers much of the same Xiaomi experience, including stereo speakers, 5000 mAh battery with 67W charging and a 10-bit 120Hz HDR AMOLED display. The Xiaomi Poco X5 Pro is another option quite similar to the Redmi with a Snapdragon chipset and better battery life, but also some concessions, like no OIS. The Motorola Edge 40 is potentially worth considering as well. It is a notably cheaper device than the V29 Pro but still delivers in some key aspects. It's a Moly display, for instance has a fast 144Hz refresh rate and HDR10 Plus certification. The Moto also has an IP68 ingress protection rating and stereo speakers, both of which are lacking on the V29 Pro. The Moto has a very clean OS if that is something you appreciate. Our verdict. The Vivo V29 Pro is a rather odd device. There are no two ways about it. First and foremost, there is the price aspect. The V29 Pro occupies a rather odd middle space between the realm of really premium and flagship devices and mid-rangers. So much so, in fact, that some proper flagships like the vanilla Samsung Galaxy S23 currently reside in the same rough price range. On the flip side, the V29 Pro does punch above its weight class in at least a few aspects. For one, 
its design and overall appearance, both subjectively and objectively, through things like a curvy display with small bezels, is more premium than your average midranger. Vivo is also clearly focusing on the camera department, and the V29 Pro is the first device in the V series to bring a dedicated telephoto. And credit where credit is due, not only is said telephoto actually quite good in practice, but it is really hard to even find a dedicated telephoto camera in this price range. All of this is fine and dandy, but the V29 Pro, unfortunately, comes with some major concessions. Vivo keeps refusing to equip the V-Series with a stereo speaker system. Not even a hybrid one. All the while, most of the V29 Pro competitors do have said feature in their roster. Also, for some unknown reason, the V29 Pro lacks official ingress protection, while the vanilla Vivo V29 does have an IP68 rating, and the two devices are almost physically identical to the point where we believe they even share some parts including the 6.78-inch, high-resolution 1260x2800 pixel, 120Hz AMOLED display. It also seems to be the same on the V29 Pro and the vanilla V29, yet the vanilla gets HDR10 Plus support, while the Pro lacks official HDR support, at least as far as the official specs sheets are concerned. Overall, it's not hard to see what we mean when we say that the Vivo V29 Pro is a bit of an odd device. Even so, with its versatile camera setup with all-around solid performance, we feel that it might still be a good fit for a photography buff on a budget. If you don't particularly care about getting a good dedicated telephoto and an autofocusing selfie, though, the V29 Pro seems a bit overpriced for what it offers. Pros Luxurious exterior and eye-catching design, though the UV reactive paint is no more. Pretty bright and color-accurate OLED display. Solid battery life and quite speedy charging. The Dimensity 8200 chipset offers great performance for a mid-range handset. Versatile camera setup now complete with a telephoto, which is hard to come by at this price point. Cons No official ingress protection rating A single speaker with average quality No expandable storage or NFC No HDR support on the display Thank you for watching See you next videos.